So in this next video, we're going to look at the text tool a little bit more, or the type tool. Um, we've already looked at how we can create simple text um, just by typing, clicking and typing, and then it gives us what's called point level text, and we can scale it, and we can squish it, or stretch it, and it's pretty much um, an image almost, although it's still editable, it, it kind of like works just like a square or rectangle would. And also we've looked at how we can create a text box and we get we can set the text inside there. Um, but in this video we're going to look a little bit more detail about what we can do with the different elements of the text box or so the text tool. So one thing to note with the text uh, a text box is that I think I've spoken about this before but you can actually change the, the size of the the text box but it doesn't change the size of the text the way to do that would be to highlight it go to your character palette change the typeface so increase the typeface here I'm just going to take it off black put it on regular um, change the the leading or the line spacing like the like so but there is a little bit of a trick um, with a text box and if you double click on the little circle here it does actually then convert it to point level text. Now what you can do now is you can stretch it just like you would a normal piece of point level text like before. However, it's now confined to that box sort of um, so all the, all the text doesn't reflow when you change the size of the box like it did before. It's now locked and you can make it bigger and smaller. Uh, the only downside is there's no back to this and if you actually double click to make it back, go back you, you've, you've still got a, a scalable text box but if you look it's sort of like it doesn't reflow the text properly anymore so uh, use it sparingly um, it's not something that I use a lot of actually because usually I'm usually dealing with small amounts of text unless you're doing some sort of brochure work and you probably wouldn't use Illustrator for that anyway okay so we've talked about the two different types of text which is the um, the point level and the, the text box what we're going to look at now is the other options. There's, now there's a few different options in this um, menu, but we're going to look at type on a path and we're going to look at the touch type tool. Um, the other one's very similar, that's like a text box. Uh, vertical type tool is basically, it, it types text vertically. Um, something that you probably won't use very often. Um, so we're going to deal with the other ones mainly in this video. So let's start by adding another artboard, um, just so we've got a bit of space. And we'll move on to creating some text. So let's just add some text. Now, when you create some text, and I usually do it from point level for a start, you can actually convert it into a shape. So just like a, a circle is a shape or a rectangle, you can actually convert text into a shape. And you do that by going up to the type menu, down to where it says create outlines and then that now converts that into a piece of uh, a, well a series of shapes rather than a text it's no longer editable so I can no longer get the text tool and, and actually try and edit it it'll think I want to draw a new text box it's now just some uh, just some shapes to the computer and again you can stretch it and squish it if you wanted to but what it does actually do is it gives us access to all the individual points within each of the letters. So just like any other shape that we draw, we say that, for example, a pencil, we see the little nodes and the little anchor points around the edges of the letters, which means that we have got some control over those now. So we can actually do something with those. So whether it's move them about, now you can, at the moment it moves to together, so we can just ungroup that. And then I can move these letters about individually. I can also scale them individually so I can stretch each one individually so I can do different things with it. But I can also affect just parts of the letter so I could drag the bottom down like this and I can drag the edge out like that. So it gives us a bit more control over what we do with our type so we're not just constrained to typing in text how the typeface looks. We can actually go one step further by converting it to outline which is a neat sort of like little way to, to add some uh, interest to your typography. Okay, so have a little bit of a play with that. 
remember create your text type create outlines and then you're able to use the direct selection tool to select points you can even grab hold of specific points and move them about if you wanted to um, you know you could basically turn this into anything it won't even look like a T if I move all the points around because every single point is accessible so I can turn what was a T into basically just a blob not sure whether you'd ever need to do that but it gives you the scope to do that because it's now seen as a shape so that's converting to paths what you can also do when you create some text and convert it to paths is you can use the pencil tool to add things to it so again I'm going to create some text I'm going to change the font this time to a different font let's go for um, okay so we found a typeface and what we can do with this typeface is we can add little things to it so sometimes you see decorations on type little swirly bits um, little in areas of interest that don't actually come with the actual typeface and the good thing about Illustrator is that if we convert it to an outline I'm just gonna change the inter-character spacing on this because it looks a little bit a little bit wide so we're just gonna go up to object uh, sorry type create outlines and then we're gonna object ungroup so we can get each individual character and then what you can do which is quite neat is if you keep it selected and you get the pencil tool you can draw onto it so let's just put like a a big sort of like a swoosh on the end of this W and can you see it's joined it to the letter form so it's now part of the the actual um, W that we had before and it's done a good job of smoothing it out and making it look neat and I've only had to do a little bit of refinement of the points but you can create little little things like this little flicks so you might want to do something like that with your letters and have some sort of like little little accent or little um, illustrative element drawn onto it and you can do that with any part of the letter so if I was to select this R and I was to wanting to make that come down here I can get my pencil tool and bring draw this right down here and let's just have a, a really big sort of like swoop on the R like that and again yes there's a few little areas that we can tweak uh, it's not perfect um, but if you draw in, get you get used to drawing a little bit more you'll f probably find that it's actually um, a lot easier you can also change the sensitivity of the pencil go to completely smooth and then it should do a better job of working out where I want it to go so there we go so you can do things like that and you can make your text look a little bit more interesting and a bit more illustrative that's another new artboard Another thing that you can do um, while the text is still live text is you can use what's called a touch type tool. And the touch type tool is this one here. And what that enables us to do is to select letters and then we can move them about. So <clears throat> unlike keeping them all together as the computer wants to position them, we have got control over how we position our text so if we don't want it exactly how the computer has it we can rearrange it to suit and we can actually rotate things around there we go so you can rotate them using that little circle and you can move them about so you can you can create some quite interesting elements of text using the touch type tool and it's a it's quite an interesting little um, element that they've in introduced into Illustrator again maybe not something that I use a lot of but I certainly use it every now and again um, and it's just a way of keeping it live text the only problem is, is that if you were to then type in some text again it won't retain those in that, that information so can you see it's just kind of like kept the first one 
and it's just made the other ones exactly the same. So it's once you've done it, you can't really just overtype and, and retain all the individual character styles. So that's um, touch type. And then the last one we're going to look at is we're going to look at uh, type on a path. Now, there's different ways of creating type on a path or curved type. We'll start off with writing curved type. And if I just make that a little bit bigger. Now, you can use the effect, the warp effect, and you can use the warp options. And there's different types of warp options. So I can curve it this way using the, the bend. And I've got different types of curve. So arch and bulge, flag, wave things like that and you can change it like this so that's one way of putting type onto some sort of curve the other way is to actually create a path and use the type on a path function so let's just make that curved so this is a bit more analog and but it gives you much more control over where it goes so once we've drawn our path we can then choose our type tool and choose uh, type on a path tool and then click on our path where we want the text to start and type in some type on a path. Now this is completely editable. Um, you can select it and change it as you normally would and it will just follow the path and you'll notice it's got these little little lines here here and here so at the moment this text is is set to left aligned so it's against this left line if i was to set it to right aligned it's against this line and if i set it to centered it will be in the middle to this line and you can move it along the path using little handles so i can grab hold of that little handle and move it along the path if you were to move the handle backwards to a point where it clips the text, you'll notice a little plus in the little box appears, which means that the area that you've given for the type to exist in between these two points isn't long enough for the type at the specified size, which is 40 point, to fit in between those two lines. So if you ever, ever happens, just drag it out a little bit more and you'll get it into the right position. Now, one of the, one of the things that's used quite a lot in logo design is text around a circle. So if we were to create a circle and we just make it a solid, sorry, an, an outline, not a solid, and we get the text on a path tool again, so type on a path, and then we write some text. As you can see, it's placed it on the circle over here. So we can now rotate that round. And you can see it snapping to different parts, so whether it's outside, inside, on the top. And basically what you need to do is you need to just position it till you get it where you want it. So there, and I'll just extend that out, and then just rotate that round till I'm happy with it. So I've got some text, and I can make that as big as I want. And as you can see, it's getting clipped because it's the text is bigger than the line, so we just need to expand, extend those out until they fit. There we go. And you've got some different um, properties of the text on, the, on, the, on a path. And these properties are outlined in the menu here. So type, type on a path, type on a path option. So you can see how it's, it's set at the moment. So the effect at the moment is rainbow, which I would probably always go for. Click on the preview and you'll see. Um, the other ones don't really look very interesting. Um, well, they probably look interesting, but they just don't look very good, in my opinion. Um, so keep pre preview fact, uh, checked. But it's this align to path that you want to look at. So at the moment, it's set to baseline. So the text is aligned to the baseline. If I choose ascender, the the type is aligned to the ascender of the letter. So this is the top of the letter is the ascender. So any letter that's pointing up like an L or a D, um, a capital S or all capital letters, it's going to align into that. And there's a little bit of a gap between the two. A descender is like a, a P or a Y. So if this was type and not text, so let's just change this to type and you'll see. So type and we change that again. So we go to type, type on a path, 
type of path options and we change that to descender you'll notice that it's now aligned to the descender of the type and then the last one you've got is center which is in the middle so ascender descender center and baseline predominantly i'll probably use baseline most of the time so we might want some text at the bottom you see this quite a lot in logos so if we used to copy that and we get the direct selection tool by drag and hold, grabbing hold of one of the little handles, we can pull the text onto the bottom and then position it where we want it. So let's get it somewhere close. It can be a little bit funny sometimes, this. You've got to be really sensitive with it. We'll go there and then we'll just reposition it around using this handle. Can I get hold of it? There we go. And we want this, this one's on the baseline but we don't want this on the baseline we want this to be on the ascender at the top so let's just change that to type on a path type options and we want ascender so now it's there and now what we can do is we can put these two together so if i select both of those and i choose my align options and i say center they're now centered so we've got some type across the top, some type across the bottom. Um, the type across the bottom is spaced out differently because of the way that the letters form. So you can change the inter, inter character spacing. So if you want to make them all equal, you can go up to your character and you can change your character spacing up here. And you can add some spacing in here and that will space it out. Or you could go to your um, type on a path options and you can change the space in here so you'll see that if we change that you see minus 7 minus 18 minus 36 and you can see it's getting it's getting tighter and tighter and tighter so but you can type some of it if you know what you want you can say well I think it's probably minus 60 maybe a little bit more than that so you can have your type um, on two different circles rotating around and you'll see this a lot in uh, logos such as Starbucks so Starbucks is a prime example of type that's been put on us on a circle so these two bits of type are not on the same circle that's on one circle that's on another circle now you can you can could make the the bottom circle bigger so that it still sits on the baseline so it could be baseline here on the inner circle and it could be a wider circle with a baseline here it depends on how you want the type to flow on the line and sometimes it's a case of just seeing what happens to to work out what's the best one now another thing you might want to do is you might want to actually color some text um, but with a gradient so if i was to just put in some normal type and let's choose a, just let's choose a different typeface for this let's go for um blenny let's go for that one um we just change the character to optical Oh, it's already up to let's go. Um, so what we're going to do with this is we're going to color it. So if I I can I can literally color it whatever I want using my typical color palette, um, selecting the colors from up here. But if I wanted to have a gradient, look what happens. It goes black. And you think well, it's definitely got the color applied to it, but it's showing me a black type. So what's happened there? Well, there are ways of actually putting this in in live type, and we'll come on to that in. Um, due course um, but for the time being I'm going to show you a different way of adding the the gradient to it so the way to add a gradient to your type is to turn your type into shapes so we'll go to create outlines and now if we apply the gradient you'll see that the gradient is now applied however the gradient is applied per character not to the word so we've got yellow to red yellow to red yellow to red yellow to red so we've got the gradient across each character but what if we wanted the characters to have yellow here and red at the end so it was through the word what we'd have to do is we'd have to go to object down to where it says compound path and make and what that does is it turns this into one full shape so effectively the computer's not seen type it's seen all the letters as one so then we if we go to apply the gradient we see that the yellows on the left the reds on the right and it goes throughout the letters using the gradient tool we can then adjust that so if we want to change the position of them 
or if we want to change the color of them, we can change the different colors within our gradient. If we want to take colors out, we just drag them off and then it gets rid of them. So we could start with one gradient and then just add colors to it. Wait till the plus comes up and then we can change. So if I want a blue, we'll go for a blue at the other end. Or maybe not, we'll probably go for a, yeah, we'll go for blue. So we've got quite a, a strong gradient there. Now the only problem with this is it's not editable. So I can't change the text now. The text is no longer text, it's just shape. So it's very difficult for me to actually change that back into anything other than starting again from scratch with a different word. So I hope you've gained a lot from that. That's just using the type tool and type related functions within Illustrator. And when you're working with type and in the next video, we're going to look at how we can be even more creative with our type um, and using the appearance tab, which is over here. So we're going to look at how we can use the appearance tab to manipulate type in a more live way where we can actually still type in afterwards, but still have retained some of these things like gradients, outlines, things like that. And I'll see you in the next video.